Although the airplane is not officially considered a glider, the plane will glide. If you are flying and the engine stops suddenly, the airplane will not just fall out of the sky. What you want to do is you want to trim the airplane to your best glide speed. The best glide speed is issued in your pilot operating handbook and it is already calculated by the manufacturer. And if you fly the airplane at a certain pitch, maintaining that airspeed, you will get the greatest distance of glide per the amount of altitude that you have. So if the engine quit suddenly, the first thing you would do if you were flying, say, you know, 100 to 105, is you want to maintain back pressure, just a level pitch attitude, to maintain your altitude while the airplane slows down. Let's say, for example, that this airspeed's uh, VG, best glide speed, is 70. So what we do is we allow the, air, the airplane's airspeed to continue to bleed off as we're maintaining our altitude. So we're having to pull, pull, pull back pressure on the elevator. It's necessary to trim that pressure off. So we'll trim as the airplane's slowing down. Just before the airplane arrives at its best glide speed, you're going to have to start to release that back pressure and allow the airplane to descend. The reason I said just before your best glide speed is because you have to understand the airspeed appears to show a slight lag because the momentum of the airplane is changing. So it's best to try to catch your airspeed maybe five before the speed you're really looking for and start adjusting your pitch again. So when we glide, we hold our pitch attitude and we start trimming the airplane until we arrive almost at our best glide speed and then allow the airplane's nose to descend and continue to trim so the airplane maintains that best glide speed. Now there's five basic steps that we go through in an emergency situation, such as an, uh, the engine stopped working. The first thing is you always obtain your best glide speed. That gives us the most time in the air to troubleshoot, call for help, secure the engine, and so on. The next thing you want to do is ask yourself, where was the wind coming from today? If the wind was coming out of the southwest, then we need to try to pick a field or a runway, if there's one nearby, we need to try to pick a field or a runway and land in that direction. Because if the wind was blowing at 10 knots and you're coming into the wind at an airspeed of 70, you're really only going 60 across the ground. But if you landed with a tailwind and you're indicating 70 and you had a 10 knot tailwind, you're going across the ground at 80. And I'm not sure how it feels to run into trees at 60 or 80, but I'm pretty sure it'll hurt less if we were at 60. So always try to land into the wind if possible. So once we've um, realized where the wind is coming from and we choose a landing site, the landing site that you choose is very important. The, make sure that you understand if there's any airports around you because many people have landed you know, one or two miles from an airport not realizing that an airport was there. Um, but if there's no airport around and you're, you're forced to choose a field, try to choose one that has been established. What I mean is that it's not freshly plowed. Bright green fields typically are freshly plowed and maybe that the farmer has planted ryegrass or something like that. Try to make sure there's no hills or crevices through your field that you have selected and no power lines or fences or anything like that. Um, there are times when you thought it was a good field until you start to get down closer and you realize, oh, there's power lines that go through that field. So don't be afraid to change your selection if necessary. Also, if you were forced to land on a field that was freshly plowed, try to land along with the rows, not perpendicular to those rows. If you try to land perpendicular to those rows, the airplane may tumble, whereas if you land along with those rows, it should settle into the, the ground. Um, if you were forced to land into trees, and the only thing that was around were just trees, you still always fly the airplane. It would be safer to continue to fly the airplane, and if this was your tree, your, the top of your trees, it's safer to fly the airplane and just flare out right above the trees and allow the, the airplane or the, allow the trees to catch the airplane versus try to continue to pitch up until you stall it and it flips nose down would not be a good ending. So always fly the airplane, always stay at your best glide speed. The next thing we want to do after we've established our best glide speed, we've chosen a suitable landing site, is we want to troubleshoot.
When you troubleshoot, you want to make a nice flow pattern for yourself. Check everything that has to do with fuel and electricity to see if you can get the engine restarted because it may have been your fault you ran an engine, uh, one of the tank, the fuel tanks dry or turbulence caused your knee to knock the key off or something crazy like that. So the first thing you want to do typically is check your fuel. If there's an electric fuel pump on, turn that on. If there, uh, your fuel selector, uh, if you're on both, maybe consider choosing one tank or the other or some airplanes don't have both, you merely need to switch from right to left or vice versa. The next thing you would want to check is your mixture. If you, were, if you ran the mixture too lean, it may cause enough engine damage to make your engine stop. So consider adjusting the mixture. You also may have gotten carburetor icing so severely that it caused your engine to stop. So consider pulling the carburetor heat on. Next, work your way over in this direction. With the key, cons consider trying to restart it or checking one mag or the other if it were just simply a rough running engine because it may run fine on one set of spark plugs, but run rough on both set of spark plugs. And then lastly, check your primer. Make sure the primer knob is in and locked in case it came loose. If none of these help and you cannot restart the airplane, then we need to call for help. How we call for help is on your transponder, use your emergency squat code, which is 7700. That will relay a signal to ATC, to the radar rooms, and let them know that you're having an emergency. If you're already in contact with air traffic control, tell them your emergency. If you're not in contact with control and you cannot um, gain their frequency uh, readily, then you can use the Mayday frequency 121.5 to call for help. As time permits, Provided you still have enough altitude, you're still flying the airplane, it's, it's just gliding, you understand how, yeah, which way you're going to land. If there's time, then you want to secure the engine. To secure the engine, you go back through the same flow you used earlier. Turn the fuel selector to off, turn the mixture off, turn your key off. Consider the master switch also, but if your airplane has electric flaps, you may choose to use the flaps first before turning your battery switch off. And then lastly, ajar the door. That just means unlatch one of the doors. The reason that you go back and secure the airplane is just in case the airplane tumbles when you land in the field. And if it tumbles, you don't want any more chance of fire, uh, sparks, fire, anything like that. So you want to go back and secure everything. The reason that you unlatch, or what they say, ajar the door, is in case the frame gets bent, if that airplane did tumble, that you're not trapped inside that airplane. So these are the five basic steps that you would follow in the event of an engine failure. Always trim for your best glide speed and fly the airplane. That's the most important thing. Next is choose the landing site, but consider the winds. Next, troubleshoot. Create a nice flow for yourself, checking everything to do with fuel and electric. If time permits, call for help by, uh, um, by uh, putting in 7700 on your transponder or calling 121.5, the Mayday frequency. And then finally, if there's time, secure the aircraft. Go back to your flow, turn off everything that has to do with fuel and electric, and then land the airplane.